Hi there, we're here back again with Greg Wiseman, and for the first time, we've got Brandon Vietti here, right? Yes. Great. Okay, how are you guys today? Um, what was it like seeing the uh, um, you know, reaction to the fans you know, at the panel and everything? This is the first time you unveiled it in the public, correct? Yeah, uh, gratifying. Uh, you know, they've been very excited to uh, have our show come back, to see footage. We've been making it for a year. We've been exciting to, excited to share it, so it was so nice to actually come to Comic-Con and and share our first footage and see reactions live in person. That's not something we always get. A lot of times it just goes out on a streaming service and you don't get to see people's reactions. It's it's so nice to be in the room with the people that helped bring us back and see them respond to our first stuff. What he said. <laughs> well, there you go. What was it like stepping back into this world again for you know the first time in like five years, right? You guys came back into the show and then unexpectedly just, it, it's, it's come back. What has it felt like? It was fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, we had to refresh our own memory because the show is so dense and complex. So I like made index cards for literally every character who had appeared in season one and two or in the companion comics or the video game. And then a handful of characters that we had always talked about using but hadn't gotten around to yet. And I just put all those on the wall so we could sort of look and say, okay, this is where we left each of these characters at the end of season two. Um, oh yeah, that one, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And then we begin moving those cards around and creating stories. And again, for us, the characters are so well realized, so well thought out. I know that sounds like bragging, but it's, it's just how we feel about it, that the characters sort of began to tell us where we would go next with them. Yeah, and of course we brought in some new characters for our third season because it's Young Justice, and we always like to bring in new young characters to sort of bounce off of you know our established characters, so it was nice to um, you know very easily. It took a little time. It wasn't wasn't work though. It was like very pleasant to like kind of go back and revisit the old show, refamiliarize ourselves with all of the plots that we'd created in season one and two, and then kind of see where those characters would be now. Like naturally, where would they go? And now let's introduce some new characters to see how that kind of stirs the pot a little bit and creates some new interesting stories. Yeah, and that actually leads us to one of our fan questions. How do you guys balance such a large roster of characters? You have basically, you know, you have Infinity War saying, oh, we have the huge, biggest crossover event, and then we have you guys who are like, just hold this for a second. We'll show you how it's done. We'll have even more characters and more fan favorites. I think one of the things that we free ourselves from is this notion of balance, um, that everyone's got to have equal time on the show. We tried to do that season one, and I think we were fairly successful. But um, as we move forward, we do have such a huge cast that um, we let the characters define their stories and let them uh, define their screen time. Um, you know, there were characters in, for season three that we sort of planned on kind of writing out of the season. Not saying they were gone, but just sort of pushing them off to the side and sometimes they'd come back and wave their hands and go hey we're not done I've got something I need to do this season and as long as we keep our eyes open to what the characters own motivations are and what their activations are uh, they'll tell us how to write it and uh, but, but a big thing was us sort of letting go of this idea of balance that oh every character needs to have so many episodes that are focused on them in some kind of artificial way just so that we achieved balance so we gave up on that notion and it was really very liberating yeah i think you know one of the things about our show is we're telling uh, a story about a, a group of characters that are living in the dc universe and so we kind of define the dc universe with a lot of extra characters that some are very well known and loved already by fans some are new but you know, we kind of see them as the environment. You know, some of those characters, they don't have to be up in the foreground characters that have their own storyline. Um, they can just be there as a texture of the DC universe to, so that our, our core characters can kind of bounce off of them. If you could describe Outsiders in one word, I know you guys are typically very, you know, averse to giving spoilers. What would it be? Well, I mean, in one word, I don't have it, but in 20, um, you know, <laughs> Our characters in season one were very much the protégés of the superheroes. They were insiders. They may not have gotten access to the 
watchtower, but they were inside that world already. What we've done in season three is bring in, in a, in a quite literal way, outsiders, people who are not the children of these heroes or the sidekicks to these heroes. These are characters who are coming from different countries. One forager is coming from a different planet. He's a different species, literally. So they're very much outsiders to this world of superheroes and unsure whether they fit in at all. They're unsure whether they want to fit in. Season one, season two, all those young heroes wanted to be heroes. And in season three, some of these characters aren't sure that's what they want at all. So that's what outsiders means on one level to us. On another level, we're also, um, to some degree, um, adapting Batman and the Outsiders and, and other DC Outsiders comics that have been published. So it's the Earth-16 twist to it, but there's, a, there's definitely elements from those comics in our show. So Yeah, I guess to answer your question, the one word is Outsiders. That's it. That sums up the season <laughs> in some, many levels. Many fans uh, feel that, you know, like in a way, you know, just reading the synopsis and everything, it feels very timely for the show to come out, you know, right now. Um, you guys mentioned before that you've had plans, you know, laid out for the seasons, you know, in the past and everything. But like reopening those books and everything and trying to get those plans together now, did you guys change anything with regards to things that have happened since or adding extra material to theirs, just taking it from like how you guys have personally changed over the last five years? The basic pl game plan hasn't changed, but but the difference is is that we're fleshing it out in in uh, 2018, 2017, 2018, as opposed to fleshing it out in 2012, 2013, and so that's going to change how we flesh things out, but it doesn't change the basic game plan. Right. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> okay. Any last words to the fans? Anything that you guys would like to say to them personally? Thanks, and please keep watching. It's up to you whether we get a season four. Yeah, please subscribe to the DC Universe streaming service. That's where we'll be airing, and that's the best way you can show support for Young Justice is and to keep us going, keep us coming back for a fourth season. Subscribe to the DC Universe. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.